there guys, how's it going? Dex here and welcome to this lesson. Uh, this is on a the little kind of first part of Dance Dance by Fallout Boy. Uh, and it's a great little groove to get into, just using kicks and flams on the snare. Uh, but this is one I played very early on in my drumming with a band uh, and I absolutely sucked at it. Uh, I caused a lot of issues for the band. Uh, we'd speed up, we'd slow down. Uh, I couldn't pull off the uh, double. There's a little right at the end there, you've got a kick, kick and a flam. I couldn't pull that thing off, uh, so it caused me a lot of trouble uh, early on in my drumming. So I'm kind of doing this lesson uh, as kind of revenge to this song uh, from back in the day for causing me all that, those issues. And hopefully to save you the same if you do this song, or even if you don't know this song, just learning this groove is a really great one to get into as well. Uh, some pretty technical stuff going on, and uh, like I say, a little bit of a challenge for timing and rhythm, so we'll talk a little bit about that. So um, jumping in, uh, the main thing that's happening throughout this is you've got like a, uh, it's like a double time feel. So you've got one and two and three and four. Or, and that's the way I tend to count it, one. And your snare drum, you're playing a flam on every and. So a flam being both sticks at nearly the same time. So not coming down, same time, you're trying to make one stick lower than the other. It can either be a small left and a big right, or a small right and a big left. So either of those work, and just one, and two, and three, and four. And that's happening the whole time for that first section. And then the bass drums are just coming in between make it groovy. So the first bit, you've got a kick, followed by your flam, followed very closely by another kick. You can see in the notation, if you don't read notation, it doesn't matter, they're joined together with two lines, meaning they're very close together. So you've got a kick on its own, followed by flam kick. Pretty much straight in there. So one, up. Followed by another kick and then a flam. So the tricky thing you've got there is there's a flam kick and then a kick flam. And timing that can be tricky. So kick, Flam, kick, kick, flam. So that again, all equal distances, flam, kick, and then kick, flam, with just a little bit of a space in between. That's what that funny squiggly thing is between the bass drums. So kick, and then flam, kick, kick, flam. So kick, flam, kick, kick, flam. You can even just repeat that first half for a while. Kick, flam, kick, kick, flam. Kick, flam, kick, kick, flam. Now, one thing that might catch people out and really did for me early on uh, was because you're not kind of ticking away on a hi-hat, normally you like tick away and that's like a grid and everything lines up with that kind of ticking away that you're doing. All of a sudden you don't have that, so it kind of feels like every note's kind of floating around in the air. In fact, I could play this whole groove like this. I played every note perfectly. I play them all in the right order, but the wrong rhythm, it's the timing, it's the gaps in between. That's what makes it weird. And normally the ticking on the hi-hat... ...is what helps you kind of stay in time. Uh, so that's something, that's what I actually used to do very early on the band. I'd play... And again, that fast kick was a big problem for me. So I actually played that and the rest of the band were like, well, that sounds awful. It was like, well, I either do that or we don't do this song in the band. <laughs> so, and then I, I sat down and I learned it properly and I, it still wasn't great, but I got there. But that's your first bit there, but working on that timing, trying to internalize it. Boom, ba, boom, ba, ba. And that's just your first half. Then you've got quite a big gap. So again, you're finishing on that snare, boom, ba, boom, ba, snare. Big gap because there's nothing else in, in there before the next snare drum comes in. So then there's another snare followed by a kick, kick, flam. So first half, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. Second half is just snare, kick, kick, snare. Second half again, snare, kick, kick, snare. So big gap, snare, and then very close together, kick, kick, snare. So just those last three beats, this is the bit that caused me a lot of issues. Kick, kick, and then you flam on the snare. So trying to get those consecutive groups of two, kick, kick, you can do it without any fancy techniques. You can do it heel down, so again, if my heel's on the floor, so just working on those one, two, one, two. Just very relaxed, trying to catch the beater as it's coming back to help you get those two. That's a great thing to work on in general in drumming. Um, but then you can play heel up and two stomps. You can see my knee coming up and down both times. You can do that. But what I tend to do if you're trying to get even faster than that is uh, I do something called the slide technique where I start low down the pedal, I do a little tap, and then I slide up and I'm stomping the full weight of my foot. So I'm kind of catching it as the beat is coming back. I'm catching it as I go down. So that's what I do. There's a billion different techniques what you can do uh, for that. But again, the uh, the foot technique section on the website goes into foot technique in a lot of detail. Uh, because it was this was one of the songs that kind of got me into. I need to get better with my right foot. But that group of two, 
Again, either doing it with a technique or just stomping or playing heel down. You can get a lot of speed without anything too fancy or too much thought. Just sheer kind of pushing through and trying to work on groups of two. Um, but if you look into your foot technique a bit more, it's going to make that easier. But one, two, and then a two flam. Ga, ga, ga. And then just timing that flam to come in. You can see my hands are getting ready as I'm playing those two bass drums. You don't want to be playing kick, kick, uh, and then got to lift your sticks up. So try and keep it all very relaxed. The whole time, one, two, three, four. My arms are one, and two, just really trying to flow, rather than, uh, 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 you can see that kind of uh, lifting it up at the last minute, let the sticks, as soon as you finish playing, lifting up ready for the next beat. And you're trying to make that fine, blah, it's okay. You don't want them too far apart, da da, but blah, I would say to the point that you can't vocalize it. If I go ta ta, okay, I can vocalize that, but if I go blah, that's basically what comes out. But you also don't want ta, where they're exactly the same time, so. So just close enough to ga, blah, blah, just to make that kind of gross, disgusting blah, blah, okay, it makes it sound bigger, creates this fat sound. Rather than one hand, That almost sounds polite, but really kind of fat. And you want one note low, one note high. Duga, duga, rather than gaga. You don't want too close together. So that note, literally, really, really soft. You can do it the other way, left, right. Either way is fine. That's the kind of rhythm that you're uh, looking for there. So anyway, uh, that's the main pattern. Um, what we're going to try and do now, I'm going to do a little bit of a play along with you. Uh, the actual song, I was clocking it at around 114 BPM. Uh, I'm going to play it along with you. I'm going to count you in. I want you to play along with me slowly uh, just to help you get the rhythm. Because this is one that you've got to kind of hear and feel. It's kind of tough. I remember looking at this and going, okay, uh, 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 hey, I got it doesn't sound right. The, you've got to play the right notes and the right rhythm. The rhythm comes through listening to it. So we're going to play together slowly at 60 BPM, uh, which is still pretty chunky. Uh, but we're going to play together so you can hear whether you've got it in the right kind of sequence. Uh, and you'll be able to tell if you've gone wrong because it will sound wrong. It's okay. Whereas when you're playing on your own, sometimes you can't quite tell. So we'll play at 60 and then later on we're going to play at the full speed of 114 BPM. So <clears throat> starting at 60 BPM, I'm counting four, then we're in together. One, two, three. And there you have it. So you can see that's at 60 BPM. If you're not played with a metronome before, you can play along with that. But again, by hearing me, you can tell whether you've got it right. But then feel free to either speed up or slow down the video if what you're watching on is that functionality. You can try and speed it up a bit. But we're going to go for the full tempo now. <clears throat> Gradually work your way up to 114 BPM. And try it with me. Same as the track. One, two, three, four. And there we go, there's the groove that kicks my butt. <laughs> it's great. 
But anyway, um, now there is obviously a lot more to the song, but that's the kind of troublesome bit that caused me a lot of issues. Um, but I hope that's given you a little bit of a hand. You've gotten into some of the stuff. Uh, if you want to get into the foot technique, again, I've got an entire foot technique section on the website um, on, again, going into the flams and stuff, trying to get them nice and separate. And again, the rhythm, understanding that and feeling that if you're tr having trouble staying at the same speed, again, playing around with that, understanding rhythms, note rates, and what all that means. Might sound really boring, but it's not. It's the absolute foundation of drumming. The more you understand that, okay, you'll be able to climb on top of that and the better you're going to be as a drummer. So it's well worth just even just binging a load of videos that help you understand that a bit. So even if it doesn't all quite go in, it's going to give you a little bit of something that's going to help if you think it's going to be a bit boring. But it's not, okay? I, I found it pleasantly kind of interesting. Like, oh, okay, you know, all this stuff that I do on the drums, it makes sense now. That was the kind of eureka moment for me. So it's well worth getting into understanding what all this mumbo jumbo means. So anyway, you take care. I hope that's all uh, made sense and you guys have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.